Hey there, what's up guys? So to continue with our circle geometry theorems, here I've prepared six examples for us to quickly go through. And for each example, I'll give you like a second to pause the video and attempt it on your own and then press play when you're ready to see the solution. Now on the screen right now, you'll see all the theorems that you'll need to know for this video. So first we have our center theorems, angle at the center, two times angle at circumference. You have your line from center perpendicular to chord, bisects chord. You also have your angle in a semicircle and radii, which creates these angles opposite equal sides. Then moving on to our cyclic quad theorems, here you'll see opposite angles add up to 180, angles in the same segment, exterior angle of a cyclic quad, and also this theorem that's not necessarily linked with cyclic quads, but I just grouped it with this bunch. So it's equal chords subtend equal angles. And lastly, we have our tangent theorems. Here we have the tan chord theorem, then two tangents from the same point are equal in length. Also, radius perpendicular to tangent. Okay, so these are the theorems you'll need to know to answer the questions. Let's start with our first example. You can ignore the funny numbering that you'll see on the side, for example, the 3.3 in this one. I've extracted these questions from the answer series textbook, so the numbering will sort of jump around as I've taken these examples from different sections in the textbook. Okay, so for example number one, we have a circle going through the points A, B, and C, which also forms a triangle. Then point O is the center of the circle, angle A is 40 degrees, and angle ABO is 15 degrees. You need to determine, with reasons, the size for angle X, Y, and Z. Okay, so pause the video now if you'd like to give it a try, and press play when you're ready to watch the solution. Okay, if you're ready, let's see the solutions. So, angle X is at the center of the circle. Now we know that angles at the center of a circle will be twice the size of the angle subtended at the circumference of the circle. So therefore angle X will be equal to twice the size of angle A. And since angle A is 40 degrees, angle X will be 80 degrees. Okay, that's simple. To calculate Y, we first need to understand that OB and OC are radii. Now this creates an isosceles triangle, okay? So the angle by C would also be equal to Y. You have these base angles, B and C, um, while well it's OBC and OCB, both of them are equal to Y. And then I'm also using the theorem that interior angles of a triangle will sum to 180. We can then work out Y as 50 degrees. You simply say 180 minus the 80 degrees divided by 2, and this gives us 50 degrees for angle Y. All right. So now to find Z. In triangle ABC, we know that the sum of the angles of that triangle must give us 180. So by minusing the 40 degrees, the 15 degrees, and the two angles of 50 degrees, we'll get the size of angle Z. And so the answer to that is 25 degrees. Okay, moving on to example number two. So again, pause the video if you'd like to give this a try on your own and press play when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, ABCD is a cyclic quad. Opposite angles of a cyclic quad should sum to 180 degrees, so therefore lowercase a would be 100 degrees, and lowercase b would be 60 degrees. Opposite angles of a cyclic quad. Example number three. This one is a lot more challenging, so definitely pause the video here to give it a try on your own. Okay, so here you have the circle going through points L, M, N, and K, and you have this tangent PMT, right? They also give us the size of angle L, M, N, which is 35 degrees, and O is the center of the circle. We need to find the size to the angles A to E in alphabetic order. So we'll start with angle A. Angle A is the angle between the tangent and a chord. We have our tangent PMT, we have the chord LM. Subtended from the chord is the 35 degree angle by LMM. This means that angle A is also 35 degrees, since we have angle between a tangent and a chord equal to the angle subtended from the chord, also known as the tan chord theorem. Now, to find angle B, 
mn is the diameter of the circle. We know that diameters always subtend 90 degree angles at the circumference of the circle. So angle B is 90 degrees. The name of this theorem is angle in a semicircle. Then if you look at angle C, that is also 90 degrees. Notice PMT is a tangent and OM is a radius and those two lines form angle C. So where radius and a tangent meet, they are always perpendicular. Therefore, angle C is 90 degrees. Now to find angle D is pretty straightforward. You have angles on a straight line summing to 180 degrees. You can also think of D as angles in a triangle summing to 180 degrees. Either way, you get angle D as 55 degrees. Now to find E, you had to see the cyclic quad. L, M, N and K. Opposite angles of a cyclic quad adds up to 180 degrees. So here we can see that angle E is 125 degrees. And that's it for that example. Example number four. Here we have a circle passing through X, Y, L and M with the center O. And O, L is parallel to M, L and angle X is 40 degrees. We need to find the size for angle O, 1, Y2 and O2 with reasons. Pause the video now if you'd like to try this on your own. But if you're just here to enjoy the show, you can keep watching. So, angle O1 is the angle at the center of the circle. Angle at the center of a circle is equal to twice the angle at the circumference. Can you see that angle X is the angle at the circumference? So therefore, angle O1 will be twice the size of angle X, which makes it 80 degrees. To find Y2, again you can see the same theme playing out here. OY and OL are radii of the circle. And so we have the same scenario like in the first one, where we have this isosceles triangle. So angle Y2 and angle OLY will both be equal to 50 degrees. Okay, sum of angles in a triangle. Or rather, angles opposite equal sides. The isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, then to find O2, we need to now use our parallel lines. Notice OY is parallel to LM. So you can form these alternate angles. O1 is alternate to OLM. So angle OLM is 80 degrees. Again, we can take into account that OL and OM are radii of the circle. So they are equal to each other. And you have this isosceles triangle again. So angle M is also 80 degrees which therefore makes angle O2 20 degrees, since that's the sum of angles in a triangle. Okay, pretty simple stuff so far. I hope you're getting used to this. Let's move on to the fifth example. So here we have a circle passing through points A, B, C, and D. Then we have this line RDS, which is the tangent. You can see it at the bottom there. And angle D3 is given as 10 degrees. Point O is the center of the circle. Calculate with reasons the sizes of angle B2, O1, A, C, B1, and D1. Pause the video now if you'd like to give the problem a try. Okay, I hope you're getting more comfortable with this now. OD and OB are radii to the circle. That makes angle B2 also 10 degrees. Angles opposite equal sides. Then you have angle O1 which equals 160 degrees. This is the sum of angles in a triangle. Angle A would therefore be 80 degrees since we have angle at the center equals two times the angle at the circumference. And angle C is going to be 100 degrees since we have opposite angles of a cyclic quad. Now it's also given that BC is equal to DC, therefore we have another isosceles triangle. So angle B1 and angle D2 will both be equal to 40 degrees. Sum of angles in a triangle, angles opposite equal sides. And lastly, angle D1, which is the angle between the tangent and the chord. And we know that it's equal to the angle subtended from that chord. So angle D1 is equal to B1. Both of them are 40 degrees. So even though this question looked quite complicated, it was pretty simple to do. What we should also keep in mind when doing these questions 
is that there are different ways to finding the answers. You might have arrived at the answer in a completely different way, but if your reasoning is still sound and correct, then you will still get the answers, even though you've chosen a different path. Okay, let's check our last example. So for our last example, again we have a circle with center O and points A, T, C, B all lying on the circumference of the circle. Line S, T, U is a tangent to the circle at point T. Angle A, T, C is 105 degrees and angle C, T, U is 40 degrees. Um, also B, C is equal to T, C and that's going to be helpful for the first question. Now you need to calculate the size of angle A1, O1 and angle B2. Pause the video now if you'd like to give it a try and press play when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, so to find O1, this was kind of tricky, but I did hint that you'd have to use the equal chords. Um, first, you had to see that the angle C to U, 40 degrees, is the angle between a tangent and a chord, and that angle is equal to the angle subtended by the chord. So angle A2 is also 40 degrees. Now chord TC subtends angle A2. And chord BC also subtends angle A1. Since they are equal, equal chords will subtend equal angles. So angle A1 is also 40 degrees. Then the rest becomes easy. If angle A1 is 40 degrees, then angle O1 will be 80 degrees. You've seen this countless times. Angle at the center equals two times the angle at the circumference. But to find angle B2, we actually first had to find the angle B1. So what I did is I said, since OB is equal to OC, they both are radii, you have this isosceles triangle. So angle B1 and C1 will both be 50 degrees. Angles opposite equal sides. Then if you have a look inside the cyclicoid ATCB, B and T are opposite angles in the cyclic quad. So the whole angle B plus the angle by T would be equal to 180 degrees. Now since angle ATC is 105 degrees, the whole angle B should be 75 degrees. And this makes angle B to 25 degrees since we already have B1 as 50 degrees. I hope that makes sense. Okay, this is the last example. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, maybe learned something today and had fun solving these problems. I'll see you in the next video.